So now I can work with these guys, not just on the Note 4, I can start looking at potentially how the solution goes out to visual displays, access points, routers, blah, 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 all this stuff. LED lighting, I mean, it's amazing. You see the product portfolio, all this stuff that we can start to combine together. So then you add in 360, Samsung 360 services. So now we're looking at this from a holistic perspective. We're getting away from just being these, you know, where's my device or the, the device guys, right? That's okay. So, you know, we're getting away from just saying, hey, we're the device guys, we're fancy, we have a great colorful screen, and then, okay, that's not good enough these days. That actually probably will last about two seconds of a conversation with the CIO. It's the other stuff at the bottom. This is where we need you guys. Samsung does a lot of stuff, Will. Building innovative solutions is not our core competency, and we recognize that. We need some really, really, really innovative partners to start bringing that to bear for us in the marketplace. So as Mark alluded to, holistic solutions. I now go into a CIO and I say, hey, I've got the device. I've got the technology. You check the boxes on some of the certifications. Um, but what about the line of business applications? OK, what about some of the back end infrastructure I need to tie into? What about some of the hardware components where I need some of the analytics and the intelligence and all this other fun stuff? What about that? That's you, OK? So that's the world that I live in. I call that my driver because, you know, if I'm thinking about it, we can do the other stuff well. We've done, boy, that's like a clips in my face when I walk through there. So these are the partners that we work with. Now, this is an eye chart, but there's probably some names on here that you recognize. The, the takeaway from this, okay, we did this in what, 16 months, Mark? Mm -hmm. All these partners? We brought on, we've engaged at various different levels. Some we got right, some we had to learn from, quite frankly. Some you guys taught us what we needed to do better. But along the way, what we've done is we've built out this program. We said, okay, now I've got a catalog of partners that I can work with. So when my tier three sales team goes out to a Boeing, goes out to a Coca-Cola, and they come back and say, hey, I need this, before the answer was, okay, we got to go find somebody Let's cross our fingers and let's hope this works on the device. And then the work started that Mark's doing today, which is let's correct the problem and then re-enter the conversation back with the customer and say, hey, it's fixed now. They've moved on. So now we do the front end work, right? So now if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I need XYZ solution, I can go to Mark and say, hey, Mark, we've got a customer who wants this today. Can you tell me who we can utilize? Boom, we bring you into the conversation with us. That's kind of how these things are starting to proliferate with the, the engagements that we have with our enterprise customers, okay? So the other thing to take away from this is, is, is the following. We look at partners in a, in a number of different categories. Are you an emerging innovative solution provider? You can have three people who works for you. That's fine. You might fill a gap in a partner category that we don't have a lot of uh, partners currently in. You might be in an emerging space where we need to talk to some folks who are, quite frankly, a little bit more nimble and innovative. There's other partners that we look at and say, okay, that's a strategic partner because they scale kind of to the global size of Samsung. There's other partners where we're like, hey, this is a transactional relationship. We get it. We're going to make some investments. We're going to put some resources in it, but it's not truly strategic because it's kind of a little bit commoditized maybe. So we look at these things in a different fashion. So please don't take away from this that you have to be some big brand box name in order to do some work with Mark's team or my team, OK? So let's get to this. And it's funny, I, I, uh, <laughs> there's some folks in the room who were part of this last week. But I spent about two and a half days last week here in San Francisco working with a partner of ours um, on building out kind of the framework we're talking about of once you build out the partnership and the solution, what do we do then, OK? We spent about 10% of our time here talking over two and a half days. I know some of you right now are like, what? He's crazy. That's where all your time should be spent. How do you measure the success? No. 20% was on go to market, OK? And I'll show you some of the, the next slide will kind of show you some of the discussion points that we get into to kind of figure out the right formula. And it differs for every single partner we have, OK? This is where we spend all the time. Why are we doing this? What are we doing? And if I can't go out to an enterprise customer and answer this, why do you want to buy this? Why are you going to open up your wallet or purse and buy this from Samsung and the partner? If I can't answer that question, what are we doing? OK? 
if I do this right, if we answer the why, I can take that through all the way to success. That becomes so obvious I barely have to talk about it. Okay. And again, we spent two and a half days with this partner, and they're a big partner, and we kind of had to narrow down and, and answer the why, and we got to some really cool stuff um, in terms of what we're going to do going forward. So again, this is kind of the framework that I like my team to walk through with our partners. So if you kind of want to come to us and say, we want to be part of SAMHSA, and we want to take something from code to customer, you're, you're going to be kind of go through this process right here. So there's the sauce. This is, now this is an eye chart, right? Let's kind of, I almost didn't throw this slide up, but these are some of the questions off to the right. What priority level does this have? Do we have an immediate customer need that needs this right now? Yes, that's a one, okay, we're on it. I'm putting some resources in front of you and we're gonna get the job done because there's a sale waiting to happen. What kind of channels do we use? Okay, Samsung has a lot of sales channels, you guys. We have the carriers, we have distributors, we have resellers, we have this, we have that, we have Best Buy. It's all over the place. What is the, rest, the right one to utilize to hit the target customer that we want to attract? Who is a target customer, right? Who are we going after here? What's the measurements? What's the KPIs? What are some of the things that I talk to you and say, okay, this is a value to me. This is where it's going to get a win for me. What's your win out of the deal? This is a two-way two interaction here. I want to clearly understand what you're getting out of this partnership because my guys then need to make sure that they're driving that on a daily and consistent basis with your teams so that we get to the end result that's meaningful. Otherwise, I'll, I'm just going to say it, we're having a science fair. We're trying to build something that's not going anywhere and that's a waste of everybody's time, okay? But these are kind of, this is kind of the framework that we walk through when we're trying to determine the why that eventually leads us to this go-to-market model. So let me, let's, let's talk about a, a company that Mark and I worked with, okay, Click Software. These guys took uh, the Salesforce One platform and took our Gear 2, and they took what was a traditional application called Shift Expert, extended out to a wearable device. And you can see it's just got kind of four quadrants on the right. So you give this to your worker, he walks into a manufacturing plant, and he doesn't have to walk clear over to the other side and check in. He's up, oh, check in. Up, oh, going to lunch. Up, oh, back from lunch. Up, oh, done for the day. That's pretty compelling. Because if you think about it, if I walk in and I forget to check in because I'm running a little late, then I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute, no, I showed up at 8 o'clock. Yeah, but your punch card said 8.30. I know, but I was here at 8. This, I got 10 people to validate it. I now have a payroll issue that takes time and money and effort. That payroll issue just paid for that device easy, that one time. Now factor that in over 12 months, 24 months, so forth and so on. I like this one here. It sends alerts to the phone as if Mr. Andy James here, he forgot to clock in in the middle here, and he, he's getting alert on his, his wearable saying, hey, you got you to clock in, or you're going to lose out on your shift. And then finally, you can kind of utilize the device to track the number of hours that, you, that you've uh, put forth for a given week, so forth and so on. You guys understand the concept. Mark did an S, his team did an SDK workshop with these guys. They used their labs out of Israel in less than 30 days, pumped this out. So they'd literally build this out in 30 days and have a commercially viable product in market ready to offer to every single one of their customers in 30 days. That's incredible. By the way, Mark gets to work with all these fun projects. He calls me like once a week and says, do you got to check this out? This is pretty cool. So he gets, the, he gets the front end of the business. But So here, here, here's the conclusion, right? Here's the big whammy before you guys walk out of the room. There's, there's three things to focus on. It's so simple, it's unbelievable. We're dead serious about B2B. I don't care what you guys read in the press, what you read in the paper, or anything. We've tripled the size of my team in the last 12 months. Mark, your team has grown exponentially. I don't even know how much. Nick, your team as well. Globally, we've doubled the size of our B2B force, okay, which is substantial uh, over a very short period of time. Um, we need partners like you guys. If I go to the U, we, we absolutely need you. If you take away anything, we want you, we need you, we need that community with you, we need the interaction, we need the connectivity. Very simple. Okay? The joint opportunity, though, is where it's key. If we put us combined with you guys, the, the, the force we're finding as we walk into an enterprise customer together and deliver a joint solution has tremendous power, okay? I go in as a silo, hey, I'm Samsung, we're doing all this, nice to meet you, I leave. 
You guys come in there, hey, I'm such and such, da, da, da. Hey, what are you doing on Samsung? Do I, I don't know, I don't talk to them. Or, hey, check this out. It's working, we've tested, it's validated. Kick the tires, let us know how it works out. Boom, much better story, okay? That's what we want you guys to recognize. Mark's available, I'm available. Uh, we've grown out, you know, kind of the storyline for you. It sounds like we've got some friendlies in the room, a number of folks who have worked with Mark in the past and are currently working with them. Um, feel free to reach out to us and, and let's open up the floor. If you guys have any questions, comments, advice, we like to learn, let's open the floor. Anything? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Should talk to us now. Absolutely, uh, we definitely want to see you know what you've implemented and um, see the extent to which you took it, right? And um, and also it gives us a chance to see you know uh, how it could be of value to some of our business customers. One of the things that I didn't mention is uh, part of the the SDK workshops or in that line is uh, we'll also put together uh, once you're a member. Uh, some brief descriptions of what the solution is to present to our sales teams. I do do two things right now, and we're developing a tool to, to extend this capability, but uh, we do a thing called Solutions Fridays, and mm -hmm. that's nothing more than an email with a brief description of what the solution does, just so we can give a nugget to our sales teams to be thinking about solutions, first and foremost. But secondly is uh, spark uh, maybe their memory about a use case or a need or a challenge that a customer had presented to them, right? So this uh, sort of opens the door uh, for a conversation between our sales team and you. And then we follow that up, we do a uh, session on Mondays, and we invite the partners to come present their solutions to our sales teams. So we open up a bridge, we have uh, hundreds of folks that work on our team, we get uh, quite a few that show up to that call. And usually what happens, you get a few folks later on that say, hey, you know, I've got a customer that could benefit from your solution. And the tool that I mentioned, we're creating a, a tablet-based tool which will help the sales teams do this out in the field on the fly. And that's one of the, the benefits of the program is we'll expose your solution uh, to that. And one of the things that allows the sales teams to do is to filter down um, uh, solutions based on use cases. Maybe it's a, a vertical. Um, maybe it's certifications. So we're trying to bring a lot of solutions intelligence to our sales team and uh, open the door for training even. So uh, we've got a good platform that, that, that is in the works to push out to the sales team and potentially even provide that to our partners because we, we often have some partners that reach out and say, hey, I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> we had a um, gear developer uh, who actually it's a smartphone developer, but uh, they were extending their application to the Galaxy Gear. And what they do is uh, 911 services. So they're connected up with all the Entrados and uh, those folks that provide 911 services, but they wanted an SOS alert on the gear device. Uh, I had another partner that works in the um, state and local government space, and they have an application which they give to field workers, uh, mainly social workers, and they were looking for that type of functionality. And I had a partner re that partner reach out and say, hey, I'm looking for something. And we were able to connect those two, and now they've got uh, joint development going on uh, to put that out to protect social workers that are in the field. So that's the type of thing that we want to encourage uh, that's really the whole point of an exchange, right? Is to provide everyone knowledge of what others are doing and see if there's compelling opportunities to, to do joint development. So, yeah. So what percentage of your partners uh, have leveraged the uh, NSDK? So it's growing. Um, it's one where the education certainly helps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not always. Uh, you know, the circumstances are that developers don't always find what's available for Samsung, but certainly events like this help. This being our second year of doing this certainly is going to increase the number of partners that we're doing that with. Um, so from a percentage standpoint, it's probably low at this time, but it's certainly increasing as we ramp up our SDK workshops. Yeah. 
Well, a lot of that too is right, is the education and the exposure. You know, again, a lot of people don't know that we're doing this stuff. Um, I like to tell people that literally our North American mobile B2B team is three years young. Okay. Now, on the electronics side, they're much more mature. They've been around a lot more. Um, but we're three years young. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of this has taken place literally probably in the last, accelerated in the last 16 months. Yeah. Good question. Yep. That's the mobile SDK. Uh, so you'll have uh, the packages like multi window, look, gestures, uh, the things that really enhance the, the overall experience for end users uh, or that leverages unique capabilities of our devices. So S Pen is a perfect example of that. We have a lot of uh, field uh, companies that are uh, leveraging S Pen, DocuSign, and Prono Forms, and yep. uh, folks that need to do signature capture and even take advantage of the pressure sensitivity uh, features of the S Pen. So now we can start to incorporate um, actual authentication into signatures. So is the person that signed it really the person that signs that way, right? Uh, so pressure sensitivity plays a role in that, maybe the angle of the pen, and that's available in that, that package. Uh, you know, I, I think the key is, though, is, you know, when you work with Mark's team and you kind of, he starts to understand and the comprehension of your solution starts to grow, Mark's really exceptional at saying, hey, you might want to think about this, or let's take a look at this, or we've got this coming down the road. Um, you know, I can think of so many examples where you, you started down one track with a, with a partner and completely ended up doing six different things because they just weren't aware that we had some of the capabilities. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the, the train of thought is such, I don't like people to say, oh, well, we're developing on Samsung's S Pen. That makes them look really rich and good. No, listen, we can literally overnight, because of the way we've structured these APIs and SDKs, probably add a half a dozen features to your already existing solutions with very little effort. Okay, so now it's like going, here, here's our version one customer, and then a couple months later, hey, here's version two with six new features. We really didn't do a lot, but we're, you know, you're getting some additional value. So that's, that's kind of how I think about that. Yeah. And the, yeah. the other thing, too, I'll just add to that is we're working with other groups internally at Samsung as well, because there might be opportunities. Uh, we often get sourcing from the field. We get sourcing from other mm -hmm. teams within Samsung. Um, you know, if there's a technology integration that needs to take place with some of these, uh, we can help connect you. And um, certainly, uh, folks that work on our Samsung 360 services team has some experiences to to develop solutions for the enterprise, um, have uh, development experience. So there's literally a direct connection that can be made there. And so for those customers that are looking to to benefit from that, uh, we may onboard you, but maybe it's more appropriate that we do all the joint development in the Samsung 360 services context. So uh, there are some, some times where it may not make sense to be promoted on the exchange because there could be uh, a white label opportunity or something like that, right? So we help sort of vet that. We bring the partner uh, through a life cycle and figure out what's the best uh, based on the goals that you want to achieve. So. I think we had done. Yeah. It's, it's a combination, right? So a lot of times Mark and his team will say, hey, look, here's kind of the, a, a particular vertical, right? Who do we need within this vertical for whatever reason? Sometimes we have customers coming to us saying, this is a partner we work with and we really need them to partner with Samsung to bring, kind of tie all the components together. Um, some of it is demand driven. Some of it is we're pulling partners to us. Some of it's being pushed to us. Um, so it's, it's kind of a combination, to be honest with you. It's never as simple as just saying, hey, look, we're going to go after these guys. The other thing is, too, is sometimes you pick up the phone, and believe me, we get called and emailed a thousand times a week by people saying, hey, we will be part of Samsung. And you're like, okay, wow, this is fascinating. Let's talk more about this. You, know, you didn't even really know about it. Um, so it's a variety of different ways, quite honestly, that, that this stuff kind of comes inbound. What we try and do, though, is not be all things to all people. And I think we want to be very clear about that. Um, We'll level set right from the get-go of, hey, here's where we think this can go, because the last thing we want to do is have you come into Samsung. This happens frequently, so I'm just going to bring it in, bring it up. People come to Samsung and think, you guys have global scale, you have all these customers, so we're going to come to you and you're going to sell thousands of our product in the next 30 days. It doesn't always work out that way. 
Um, sometimes you got to kind of kick the tires and get your feet wet and get a couple of use cases before the trend line starts to head, you know, a little higher up the up the pole, right? So, um, to answer your question, it's a variety of ways. Yeah. <laughs> you had to bring that up, didn't you? Well, so yeah. Good eye. We can talk about that one after, but no, this is the actual correct email address. My last name is Brandenburg, oh, well, me, but um, yeah, that's a little IT issue there that at the very beginning, it's two and a half year battle so far. So I was like, just, I'll let it go. I'll just. There, there are opportunities for uh, more strategic partnerships, um, you know, so the, the conversation is certainly open for that. Um, and we might have a couple of cases out there. Directly, my team wouldn't necessarily, you know, uh, we could talk about it. But again, it's, those are things that really happen at a, a strategic level. And, um, you know, potentially there's uh, benefits for both sides. And, you know, we want to get more of our product out there, obviously, but we want to show uh, solutions like yours on our product, right? So uh, a lot of times that's all it takes for some of these customers is to see your solution running on our hardware in a differentiated way for them to consume it. So. But, but there are instances though where, yeah, we'll do rev share. Um, you know, we've got to kind of go through an evaluation process and make sure that it's the right yeah. fit and that the operational components make sense and that whatever gets delivered to the customer is going to be a seamless process because you know it's easy to get stuck on the oh wow we're going to make a lot of money together but let's be realistic about this does this actually flow through to the end customer extremely well um, but yeah we'll look at stuff like that all day long my whole theory is is hey throw it on the table let's at least talk about it right so absolutely anything else so we have a couple minutes any any other questions So there is some crossover like that. I'll give you, a, you know, well, I won't give you examples, but um, <laughs> there are examples like that. But look, you guys face that competition whether you're doing business with Samsung or not. Yeah. And so my theory is, is that, um, you know, we're going to bring the right partner with us into the customer engagement, uh, pretty much predominantly based upon the customer's requirements. So we try and maintain a net neutral stance. Um, sometimes your technology speaks very well for you. And so that kind of bears out when we're in front engaging a customer jointly. Um, other times, though, you know, a customer might say, hey, bring two or three in. Let well, us trial out and, and see who's the best. And certainly there's always, um, you know, the opportunity there, if it's truly disruptive. I mean, obviously, you know, that would be good for Samsung if we were exclusive to Samsung for that disruptive solution, right? So uh, there are features that get implemented. That's what I talked about earlier about technology integration is there are teams that are looking at um, you know, these solutions to help enhance our position in the marketplace. So uh, that's occurred and that happens, you know, often. Um, we don't always hear about it uh, because they happen at a much higher level than, than us on the ground and the B2B team. But uh, certainly those, I mean, we're definitely interested in disruptive technologies that we can um, you know, join forces on, so. Now, now that said, if the space gets real crowded in a particular category, we've got to be very mindful of the fact that we've had an investment from this particular set of partners. Bringing in 16 others isn't going to make us better in that category, potentially. So, you know, you've got to do a, a real deep evaluation and, and look at the seriousness of the relationship and the impact that that's going to have. Because, look, I don't want to bring on two partners and upset two in the process who have been doing business with us for 24 months. That's not the type of relationships we want to engage in, right? So it's, it's, it sounds so easy, but it's, it's actually pretty fairly complex in how you gauge these things. Yeah, I, I say Samsung 360, but I would shorten it to S360. It just rolls off the tongue easier. But 
So, so there's, there's some things that we do that are going to be competitive. Um, usually what I like to do with partners is say, hey, let's map it out. Let's find out where we're competitive and let's just kind of stay away from that conversation. But let's find out where we have a gap that you might fill or vice versa. Um, because a lot of times, you know, my experience, and I've been in mobile for, in a, you know, mainly a sales capacity per se, uh, for almost 15 years now. You gotta move real quick. And sometimes it makes a lot of sense to say, hey, I do these five services, but I'm missing two. It's gonna take me X dollars and resources to build that up, but I can go partner with Samsung over here in 36, they'll fill in those two, or vice versa, quite frankly. Um, I'm talking to a company right now where we have, uh, Robin likes to call it coopetition. Um, where you know uh, we like to try and evaluate and kind of map out, hey, here's what you have, here's what we have, and go back to the why. Does this make sense for us to partner? Because maybe we do compete a little bit too directly. Let's be cordial and part ways. If we do have areas where we find that there's some strength in the partnership, let's focus the core of the conversation on that, right? And it's funny because you know it's it, it's interesting you bring that up because. You know, there's a lot of people who are kind of getting into the services space right now because to a certain extent, it's fragmented. Uh, I would say that it's, some of it scratched the surface. So, um, there's a lot of greenfield there. And I'll, I, I will say this, what Robin Bienfe and her team are building out is, is gonna be pretty compelling. We need partners to get us there though. You know, some of it we're standing up on our own. Some of it we absolutely need partners to help get us there without question. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Yeah. Come talk to me afterwards. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. We'll we'll chit chat a little bit. Anything else? Well, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, there's a lot of activity after this. Yeah. Awesome. Great questions, guys. They thank were clapping for you, Mr. Brandenburg. What's that? They're clapping for you. Oh, Thank no. you. I appreciate your uh, attendance and time today. Thank you.